Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In our last video, we have built a very basic MPLS TE tunnel. In this video, we're going to spend more time looking at what you can do with dynamic and explicit path configuration. And along with that, we're going to be testing failover as part of dynamic path just to see what happens when a link within the path has fails, and we're going to observe the path recalculation. We will look at reoptimization, which is the process for a router to periodically check for a better path, whether it is for a more available bandwidth or a shorter path as far as the metrics, and start using it as a new path. We will look at exclude path, which is the way for us to exclude certain link or router from becoming a part of a traffic path, and we will look at the lockdown feature, which is the way for us to tell the router not to pick a better path for, his, for a certain tunnel as part of the reoptimization process. For our physical lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch 1, although we really not going to be using router R8 or switch 1 in this lab. Here we have a router R2, 3, 4, and 5 connected in a full mesh topology over a serial point-to-point -point links, while the other routers are connected together over a layer 2 VLAN as shown in this diagram. Okay, going down to our layer 3 topology, here at the middle we have our MPLS core that we have already configure and enable MPLS traffic engineering on as part of our previous lab videos. And currently we have one MPLS TE tunnel configure that goes between R1 to R2. And just to kind of give you a quick overview, here all of these routers are configured to be as part of a flat level 2 ISIS network with router R6 and R7 advertising their loopback 10 through 12, which is our test subnet that we're going to be using to test our connectivity across our MPLS, the traffic engineering network in this lab. So we're going to pretty much pick up where we left off as far as our configuration from our previous video, which was SP0017. Let's go ahead and start our configuration task, task number one, with dynamic failover and re-optimization. So first we need to shut down R3 link to R2 and observe the tunnel one behavior. Like I mentioned, we already have a basic uh, traffic engineering tunnel configured between R1 to R2 from our previous lab. So if we do show IP interface brief, you'll see that on R1 we have our tunnel 1 right here. And to show your configuration, the destination is the RT loopback 0. We use auto routes announce, we have a bandwidth of 500 kbps, and then we only have our path option, option number 1, that's using uh, being a type dynamic. So if you show MPLS traffic tunnel, you can see that currently the tunnel goes or extends from a router R1 to R3, then R2. Okay, so on our diagram right here, we currently have a tunnel that goes from router R1 through router R3 and then terminates on the router R2. So what we're going to do, as being asked by the task, is to shut down the link between R3 and R2 and see how the tunnel gets rerouted and recalculated. Okay, so on the router R3, we're going to shut down the serial 0, 2, 0. Okay, and then shut. We'll give it a second. You can see the tunnel on R1 is still operational. The state is still up. We can see how the explicit route uh, entries has changed. So now instead of go going directly from 1, 3, and 2, it actually has to go through or re, has been rerouted through router 5. So the tunnel now has become like this since the link between R3 and R2 are no longer available. And then just to prove that on R6, we can try to do a trace route to 7701. You can see how it follows router R1, 3, 5, 2, and 7, right, like we said. So as you can see that as soon as the link that's part of the tunnel path has become unavailable. The head end routers automatically recalculate and then basically picks an alternate path for that tunnel. Okay, and this is again because the router R1 has a complete information of the whole network. And when a link goes down, it would be notify and start recalculating accordingly. So that is one advantage of using the tunnel type dynamic or dynamic path option as the router will try to find 
a path for you as long as the path meets certain constraints that you have placed on the tunnel. In our case, that constraint is just the bandwidth, which is 500k. So as long as you can find an end-to-end -end path that has the least available bandwidth of 500k, your tunnel remains to be up. Okay, so next we need to re-enable R3 link to R2 and observe the tunnel 1 behavior. So now we go back to our router R3 and then no shut. Okay, make sure it comes back. The LDP neighbor comes back so we know that path has become available again. So let's try to see if there's any change happens to our MPLST tunnel. As you can see that the path that the head end routers is using is still the same after the failover. And it doesn't really fall back to, as you can see, it's a, a shorter path between uh, R2 and R3. And this is because the head end router has to wait for the re-optimization timer to expire before it can go through another round of path calculation to pick a better path. And by default, the re-optimization timer is set to one hour. And obviously, unless we go ahead and make the change to the timer, we have to wait here one for one hour for the router to go back and start using its original path between a uh, two and a uh, three link. Or another option is to basically shut and no shut the tunnel, but that's obviously it's gonna be disruptive to the traffic that has to go across the tunnel. So here we need to adjust the re-optimization timer to five seconds. Like I said, by default is one hour. Now we're gonna lower it to five seconds and see what happened. And again, it's just a, just a number that we picked. So it's low enough for us to see in this lab and don't have to wait for a long period of time. So to do that, this is a global command. So obviously that means that the timer is global. So we have to do a command MPLS traffic eng re-optimize. Here we have timer, and then we can specify a delay, if you like, or the frequency. So here we have to adjust the frequency, which is how often the re-optimization happens. And we say we're gonna lower it down to five seconds. And you can even set it as low as zero, which means you completely disable the re-optimization. Okay, so now that we have set the timer to five seconds, and I believe the five second has passed, so let's go back and check on our tunnel. And you can see that the tunnel has reverted back to use the shorter path now that that path has become available. Okay, another way that you can actually manually force the re-optimization to happen is to use a command uh, MPLS, traffic eng, re-optimize, and then you can either re-optimize for the whole router or you can just pick certain tunnel to do that. Okay, so you can just go ahead and try that too. You can see it took that command. Although us forcing the re-optimization this time didn't cause the path to change because we already at the optimal path for a tunnel one. So you can see the path change has been three minutes and that's when we lower the re-optimization uh, timer value. Okay, so that should complete our task number one. Next is our task number two with dynamic exclude path. Here we have to reconfigure the tunnel one to never traverse router R5 and verify our configuration. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is to tell router L1 that it can pick pretty much any path it's want, but as long as it does not go through the router R5. So again, we are back at the tunnel that goes directly through R3 and then R2. So in order to exclude a router or a link from the traffic path, what we need to do is to use the command IP explicit path. So we kind of explicitly tell the router not to go through a link or a router. So first you have to give it a name and for the name we can call it no R5. And then we need to enable, we can see that you can also manually disable it. So here we need to enable. And under here we have a several options and most of these are dealing with whether it's uh, deleting or inserting a path or a path list since we're almost dealing with like a, an access list in the sense that we're going to be entering a list of path and the order that you put those paths in matters so there's our times when you have to insert or remove certain paths from the list which we would deal with in a second here, but for us to exclude only one router or a link, all we need to do is to use the exclude address command right here. So exclude address, and then we can just specify the 
router R5 loopback zero address. So that would basically exclude the whole router altogether from the traffic path. If you just want to exclude certain links, then you can just enter the interface IP on the particular router. Right now, going back to tunnel one, we have to reconfigure our path option command. So tunnel MPLS traffic. Currently our path option is uh, dynamic, but we now have to change it to explicit and then followed by the name of the explicit path. And then we give it a no R5. Okay. So before we test it again, let's double check that our tunnel is still going through R3 directly to R2. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to try to shut down this link one more time and see which path the router will start using this time. So that would be on the router R3. You do a shut on the serial interface to R2. And we saw earlier that the next preferred path or the next path that the router R1 chose was through R5. But let's see, this time, we do go back and do the show MPLS tunnel, uh, traffic engineering tunnel. You can see that instead of going through R5, the traffic is now going through the router R4. Okay, if you go, if you look it up here, the tunnel is operationally up with the path option number one that's type explicit and ties to a explicit path named no R5. And we can double check that going back to R6 and do a trace routes. We can see how the packet now goes from 1, 3, 4, 2 to 7. Okay, so now our tunnel is going this way. Okay, the next thing we want to try is to also eliminate link between R3 and R4 just to kind of force it to choose the last available path through R5 and see what happens. So now on R3, Zero link zero 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 will shut that link. Okay, so we just shut that link. So now the only available path to get to R7, or actually to get to R2, is through R5. And now if you go back to R1, you can see right there the line protocol of the tunnel one has gone down and the operational status of the tunnel is currently down. And this is because that we explicitly telling the router for this particular tunnel not to go through R5. Okay, since R, uh, the path through R5 is the only available path, the router just decide to take down the tunnel. Okay, and the tunnel will stay down as long as there's no, lo uh, no any other available path that's not going through R5. Okay, so now let's bring those uh, links that we shut down back. So that one and this one also, no shut. Give it a second and then make sure the tunnel comes back. Just going to take a few seconds for the R1 to realize that the, there are now other available path and now we're back to the shortest path which is through R3. Okay next let's see we have to reconfigure tunnel 1 to never traverse the link between R2 and R5 and then verify the configuration. Okay so now that instead of excluding the whole router R5 altogether we're now just going to be eliminating or telling the router not to ever use this link right here. Actually, we're supposed to keep the interface on the R3 to R2 and R4 down. So let me shut those back down. Okay, just to bring the tunnel back down. And now we're going to create a new explicit path that will prevent the traffic to go over the link R2. Uh, between R5 and R2. Okay, so the tunnel has gone down. That's great. That's great. So I go back to IP explicit path. This time we'll name it no R5, R2, and then enable. Then again, we're going to use the exclude address. Last time we exclude the whole router. This time we're just going to ex exclude a single link, and we're going to be using the Next top IP right here, which is IP on the router R2. So that would be 172.16.25.2. Okay, so now going back under the tunnel. Tunnel MPLS reconfigured path option in the tunnel. So path option one, again, explicit. This time we'll name it no R5 R2. 
Okay, so what we expect to happen is now that the R1 can start using router R5 again, but not the link between R2 and R5, we should have the tunnel that go from R1, R3, R5, and the only path to get from R5 to R2 is still up to R4 and then to R2. Okay, so let me uh, shut in, or oh, actually, it took a little longer than I thought, so I had to. I thought I had to do a shut, no shut, but it looks like it came up by itself right there. I just missed it by, I just missed it by a split second. But nevertheless, it came up already. And now if we do another you know, show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel command, okay, it looks like it took a couple seconds there for it to be, of the line protocol to come up. Okay, and there you go right there. So after all the calculations, R1 decides to take R3, R5, and then up to R4, and then down to R2, just like how we explained it right here. Okay, so now on R6, if you do another trace route, we should be going through 1, 3, 5, 4, 2, 7. Okay, so let's pretty much verify our configuration. Now we need to, okay, when we complete it, return the tunnel 1 to its original configuration. So before we forget, let's do a no shut on the interface on R3 that we shut down for our testing. And then on the R1, let's see where we are with the R1. Okay, we will put this back to the dynamic. All right, so that should complete our task number two.